Hi, my name is Stefan Johansen and I'm a software engineer working at Oracle. Today I want to welcome you to my presentation Reduce P99 Latencies Using Generational CDC. I've been working with garbage collection for the past 10 years and lately I've spent most of my focus on CDC and especially adding generational support to it and the performance aspects of this. In this talk I will give a short introduction to CDC and then spend most of the time looking at the specific use case where generational CDC really shines. So let's get started. What is CDC? CDC is a concurrent low latency garbage collector. This means that all the heavy GC work is done concurrently with the Java application still running. CDC is also designed with a few key goals in mind. We want sub millisecond pause times. So we should never stop the Java application threads for anything more than a millisecond. We want CDC to be very scalable. It should be able to handle terabyte of heaps. And basically, regardless of your heap size or your live set, you should be able to enjoy the very short pause times of CDC. We also want CDC to be very easy to tune. So basically only set the maximum heap size and the GC should figure out the rest. This is a very quick introduction to CGC and we don't really have time to go into the gory details, but I want to give you a quick glance under the hood. CGC is what we call a region based uh, collector, so it has a region based heap layout. This means that the heap is divided into evenly sized regions and this gives a very good flexibility compared to traditional GCs where the heap layout is decided at startup. As I mentioned, we want to have very short GC pauses and in CGC they are mostly there to do synchronization to have a safe transition between different GC phases. CGC also does something called concurrent thread stack scanning. This means that CGC can figure out what on the Java application thread stacks needs to be kept live while the Java application is still running. This is also very good from a scalability point of view because the number of application thread doesn't really affect the pause times. To get good performance, it's also very important to have highly optimized barriers. Barriers from a GC point of view is the code that is executed every time you, the Java application accesses an object in the heap. So for example, CGC has read barriers that <coughs> is executed whenever a Java application tries to read an object and determines whether or not this object is good and can be read straight away or if there is any GC work that needs to be done before the object can be read safely. And this is a key part of being able to do most of the heavy GC work concurrently with the Java application still running. So a quick look at the CGC timeline as well. CGC was introduced in JDK 11, so five years ago more or less. It was then made production ready two years later in JDK 15. And now with JDK 21, we're adding generational support to CGC. And what do we really mean with generational support or what is generational connections? Well, in general, or in most cases, newly allocated objects are just used for a short period of time before being considered garbage. Uh, and this is often referenced as the generational hypothesis. When doing a generational garbage collection, we make use of this fact by dividing the heap into two generations. One for newly allocated objects, the new generation, and one for objects that survived a few GC cycles, the old generation. We're now able to collect the young generation at a much higher frequency and at a lower cost because fewer objects uh, tend to survive in the young generation. Eventually, we will of course have to collect the old generation, but we avoid having to collect it at all GC cycles. And this is basically the case with non-generational CGC, where you have to collect the whole heap at every GC cycle. We also have a lot of cool feature ideas for the future, so there will be a lot more innovation going into CGC in the future. So yeah, getting on the CGC train now is probably a good idea. This is it for the short introduction to CGC. I now want to focus on a specific use case where generational CGC really shines. This use case is based on HazelCastJet. HazelCastJet is an in-memory distributed processing engine uh, that can be used to process a lot of events at very low latencies. A few years ago, the developers of Jet wrote a few blog posts where they tried out CGC and a few other GCs 
and it really showed some good results with CDC and promise for the future. And I wanted to explore how the addition of generations uh, would benefit this use case. Uh, the benchmark I use is based on the open source benchmark from those blog posts. And we're running a single node, uh, so it's not distributed. We have a fixed ev <coughs> event rate. Uh, and I'm using a fairly high allocation rate to stress the GC quite a bit. The benchmark itself measures the event latencies and produces an event latency report. So I'm using this as the result for the benchmark. So let's take a look at these results. And what I'm comparing is generational CDC in JDK21 with the legacy mode, the single generational mode of CDC, which is also available in JDK21, which has just been released. Uh, I'm also including CDC in JDK20 as a reference point. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at the event latencies produced by the benchmark. If we look at the average latencies, all of them look very good, uh, below one millisecond in all the different runs. So this is good. But if we start looking at the, the higher percentiles, we're already at the P99, we do see some, some higher latencies uh, with JDK20 and the legacy mode in, in JDK21. And the more nines we use, the higher the latencies we see with all the runs except for generational CDC, which keep at a very low latency even for four nines. So this looks very good. Sometimes it's easier to see results in the form of a chart. So here are the same numbers, but in chart format. And yeah, very impressive results for generational CGC. Uh, a lot of the times when you look at application latencies in GC, you're thinking GC pause times. So let's start by looking at the GC pause times in these uh, three different setups. Uh, if we look at the average, we do see that they are very low for all the different GCs. Um, single generational in JDK20 and 21 uh, are on average on 20 microseconds, uh, extremely good. With generational, we see a bit higher, and this is basically because one of the pauses in generational, we have to do a bit more work for, for the generational world to hold together. If we instead look at the max pause times, uh, the generational version is best. So we're able to limit one of the pause a bit better than we did in the single generational use case, uh, but single generational still comes in way below the one millisecond goal. Uh, so overall, the GC pause times are pretty similar, and we don't see anything that could explain the big difference in application latencies. So GC, of course, not on the only thing in the JVM that pauses the Java threads. Uh, there is a generic save point mechanism that can be used by a lot of other subsystems as well. For example, JFR uses it for some of the periodic events it sends, and a lot of other things, for example, cleanup of runtime data structures and things like that. When developing generational CDC, we actually figured out or found an unnecessary save point that was executed a lot of times. And if we look at the pause time breakdown for a JDK20 run, uh, this is using JDK mission control, we do see the clean class loader data metaspaces pause at the top here. Uh, we see that it's executed as many times as the CDC pauses, which is the CMARC start uh, and friends. Uh, but we do see that the longest duration and the total duration is much longer for this cleanup uh, compared to the GC pauses. Uh, and we couldn't really understand why, and after some analysis we, we realized that we don't really need to, to do all those invocations of this pause. So in JDK21 we've been able to reduce this to only four invocations for the same run. And as you can see the duration is also shorter. So this is a pretty good improvement between JDK20 and JDK21. And all the different uh, runs of CDC in JDK21 benefits this, both generational and legacy mode. And if we look back at the results, uh, there was some difference between JDK20 and the legacy mode. And a big part of this difference is actually due to removing this additional save point. But the post doesn't seem to answer why generational CGC is so much better compared to the legacy mode. Uh, another theory might be that the Java threads help out doing GC work, because this can happen when you have a concurrent GC. 
to try to see if this is the case, I instrumented the benchmark using JFR. So I'm adding a JFR Java, Java JFR event that looks like this. Uh, I'm adding it to the event stream to see if I have any hiccups when I try to, when the event stream tried to make progress. Uh, it's pretty straightforward event, add a name, description. I set the threshold to not get way too many events. Uh, and the only field I have to add is whether or not this event is sent during, during warm up. Uh, I get the start time and duration by default and that's basically what I'm most interested in. So let's see if we can get any better insights from this event. Uh, and now I'm only focusing on JDK 21, so I'm, I'm not going to look at JDK 20 anymore. Uh, so, a breakdown of this event. Uh, in With legacy mode, I get about four times as many events compared to generational CDC. So, yeah, it, a lot more latency events sent by, by legacy mode. And if we look at the max duration, uh, we see a longer max duration as well. Uh, but this is kind of expected because this was what we saw from the event pre <coughs> presentation from the ben benchmark. So the report there stated that we had kind of these problems, but we saw them in, in forms of P99 and, and higher percentiles. So if we instead zoom in and look when were these events sent, that might give us some better insight. And here I'm using JDK Mission Control again. Uh, I'm zooming in to two threads, and this is for the legacy mode of CDC, so single generational. Uh, I have the X driver thread, which is the CDC driver thread, and each red stripe in that thread symbolizes a GDC cycle. Uh, the other thread is one of the worker threads. We have a lot of those, but I'm only showing one to, to get a better overview. And the blue stripes here are when latency events are sent. So as we, we can see, the latency events are sent during the GC cycles. So somehow the GC is inflicting latencies to the application, but it's not the pauses, because remember the pauses were uh, tens of microseconds and these latency events are only sent if they are longer than one millisecond. That is what the threshold is doing. If we instead look at generational CGC, we have two threads for CGC, one for collecting both the young and old generation, the major driver, and one for just collecting the young generation, the minor driver. Uh, again, we can see that all latency events sent by the thread occur during a GC cycle, uh, both during young GC cycles and, and major GC cycles, uh, but a lot fewer events seems to be going on. Uh, so this is nice to understand that the event latencies seem to occur during GC cycles, uh, so it really looks like maybe the Java threads are helping out doing GC work. And what kind of work am I talking about? Well, it could be updating references to object that has moved, or it could be that the Java thread actually has to help out moving an object because it wants to use it, but the GC threads haven't gotten around to move it yet. In that case, the Java threads will move the object themselves. So let's try to dig a bit deeper, uh, use some more JFR events. There is a JFR event for allocation statistics that is sent by each cycle. Uh, and I'm also instrumenting the JVM, adding a custom JFR event for every time that the Java threads does a relocation that is moving an object. So let's see if these events can give us any more information. We'll start by looking at the relocation overview. So looking at the statistics event, as I mentioned, it's emitted for every time a generation is collected. Uh, so we get a few, quite a few of those uh, and a, a really good overview. And if we look at the total relocation size, it's down 17% when using generational CGC. So we do 7% less object copy when we were using generational CGC, which is quite significant. And part of this will of course be a reduction in done by the Java application threads. Uh, so we're getting closer to something. But to get even better insight, let look, let's look at the specific custom Java location event. I set the threshold for this event to 10 microseconds, basically to not get way, way too many events if I didn't have a threshold at all, but I still want to see a lot of events. 10 microseconds seem to give a good trade-off between a lot of events, but not too many. 
Uh, the events are only sent by the Java application threads because it's only the Java application that does this kind of relocation. So relocation done by the GC threads is not accounted in these events. And looking at these on a thread level, like we did with the, with the Java latency event, doesn't really make sense because there are way too many events. So instead we have to do with a, with a breakdown in table format. And with the legacy mode, if we look at the number of events, we get 6.1 million events compared to generational CDC, which only has 92,000 events. So quite a reduction with generational CDC, a basically a reduction of 99%. So quite extraordinary. Same goes for the total size that is relocated by the, by the Java application threads, again down around 99%. If we instead look at the max duration of these events, there is no real difference. Uh, and this is kind of expected because the amount of time it takes to do one of these relocations isn't the problem. The problem is that with legacy mode, we do so many of them, basically back to back for short periods of time, which uh, adds up to long application latencies. So let's try to summarize this a bit. Uh, we've been able to reduce the amount of relocation in generational CDC by by having a better algorithm, making use of the generational hypothesis. Uh, and this leads to significantly less relocation work that has to be done by the application threads, which in turn translates into lower application latencies. So what conclusions can we take away from this? Well, GC pauses are no longer the issue if you're using CGC. The pauses are extremely short and there are other things that will cause application latencies. Uh, but with generational CGC, we're able to reduce the amount of GC work that has to be done by the Java application threads. So in turn, that leads to even lower P99 latencies when using generational CGC. And maybe the most important conclusion to take away, you should really try out generational CGC. Uh, to do so, just go download your latest or the latest JDK, which is JDK 21 released last month uh, and enable it by using UCGC and plus C generational. Uh, it's as simple as that. And you should really try out and make sure that you run with the generational version. Legacy mode is still available in JDK 21, but it is going away in a future release. We don't know when, but you should be switching over and using generational CDC. That's it for me today. Thanks for listening. And if you have any question, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for listening.